What am I doing with an A620 ATX motherboard? These are junk, right? They don't even overclock, they don't have PCI Express 5.0, and that VRM is terrible, right? I bought this for a few reasons. It looked interesting, it brings up a good point about motherboard shopping, and I found it as an open box item for super cheap at the local Micro Center. The ASUS Prime A620 Plus Wi-Fi motherboard has a layout most gamers aren't used to seeing. There aren't flashy heatsinks, screen printings of gamer, or heck, flashy anything anywhere. It does have a couple ARGB headers, though. I.O. headers are pretty standard, but the rear I.O. is on the weak side. There are only a few USB ports back there, and the fast, fastest USB speed you're going to get out of this board is 5 gigabits per second. It has 1 gigabit per second Ethernet and Wi-Fi 5. You could upgrade the Wi-Fi, though. There are a ton of dimensionally full-length PCI Express slots, but only the top is electrically 16x PCI Express 4.0. The rest are 1x 3.0 slots, but those are still good for things. And some of them share bandwidth with the second M.2 slot. I won't go into too much more detail here. Check the manual and the product page online to get all the details. When you're used to seeing a small army of VRM components surrounding the CPU, the VRM setup here seems weak. But even many serious overclockers would agree that power management on motherboards is often overbuilt. I sandwiched my 7950X between this motherboard and the Noctua NHD15X Chromax Black. To save me from having to read these product names in the future, manufacturers should please call their products Heatsink and Motherboard. Thank you. The motherboard and CPU survived 45 minutes of the Furmark CPU burner test. You can see where the test setup sat at the end of that time on the screen. This was in a slightly cooler than room temperature environment, so keep that in mind. After seeing that, I think this board could handle any current AM5 CPU just fine. What about the point I mentioned about motherboards? Steam broke my Dota 2 the other day, and the game wouldn't launch. I hopped on this motherboard CPU with an Intel Arc A380 GPU installed and played the games there, and it was fine. The fact is, something like this will be plenty for a typical gaming PC. It's more suited for something like a giant storage server, for sure, because you could add a bunch of SATA controller cards to it. But it's good enough for a lot of uses. Really, motherboard prices are getting out of control. Everyone's telling you to get better VRMs, more M.2 slots, 26 USB ports, PCI Express 5.0, and all that other stuff, and we don't really even use it. Heck, I don't even overclock anymore. If anything, I power tune to reduce power, since the CPU is all redline out of the box now. I think if we all bought what we honestly needed and have a regular use for, then we'd have extra to spend on components that actually make a difference to us, like a better GPU for games, or RAM for video editing, or maybe you could spend it on a nice dinner with your family or a charitable donation. Buy smart. Steer the market back towards sanity. Thank you for listening to my mini rant, and I hope you come back for the next video.